Hey guys, The Simplest Student here. Welcome to episode 25 of Java Programming for Beginners. Today we're going to look at how to use an array as a frequency counter. Okay? So, what are we going to do to do this? Okay, so first of all, I've made an array of size 2, and both values in the array have been initialized to 0. So, what do these represent? So, we're just going to say here as a comment, freak. Um, zero equals heads and freak one equals tails okay so that's what these represent really so now how do we use this well we've made our random number object here okay and we've imported this class okay so what are we going to do well we're going to make a for loop and we're going to say for int flip equals zero int flip less than 1000 because we're going to do 1000 tests and we're going to say flip plus plus okay and then inside these curly brackets I don't need that int um, inside these curly brackets what are we going to do well we're going to increment our array so we're going to say freak um, one no, run dot next so this is going to be the name of our object dot next int and it's going to be a number between well it's going to be two numbers zero or one okay and that's it really okay so that's just going to increment the index of freak that this random number generates okay and now we're just going to make our print statement so we're going to say system dot out dot print ln and we're going to say first of all we're going to say heads and we're going to say freak Zero. Okay. And close that off. And plus. Okay. So that's going to print out how many heads we got. And this is going to print out how many tails we got. I just have to change that to one. And that's it, really. So we'll just run it and see what happens. Yeah, okay. So we got 492 tails and 508 heads. So, all that's happening here really is that each index in the array is storing a value or frequencies that represents something. Another example of where you could use this is with rolling a dice and how many times you get each number in the dice. Next time we're going to look at using strings in arrays. Thanks for watching, this has been The Simplest Student and I'll see you next time.